Hello and welcome to a coding challenge, tic-tac-toe. Oh, with the Minimax algorithm, that's why I'm here. Because I made this other coding challenge, tic-tac-toe, where I created a, a kind of a big, it was kind of a mess if I'm being perfectly honest, but I made a working version of the tic-tac-toe game that just played with two players picking random spots. So since then, uh, and you can check one of my live streams if you want to find where I did this, I made some adjustments to it so that I could, as a human being, play the game. So right now I'm going to play the random computer picker. I'm going I'm to go here, and then I'm going to block X, and I'm going to go here and ha ha, I win. Oh, wins. So what I have, the adjustment that I made is that I added a mouse pressed function where I find where did I click and I put my human uh, variable, which is the letter O, onto the board. And then I call next turn where next turn picks a random spot in the board and makes that the AI spot or X's spot. So the whole point of this video is for me to implement something called Minimax, which is an algorithm, a search algorithm, if you will, to find the optimal next move for the AI. I mean, I could find it for myself and then I could implement it, but the idea is I want this player, the computer player, to beat me at the game, or at least tie, to play a perfect game. And if you want to learn more about the Minimax algorithm, I would suggest two resources that you can look at that I actually looked at before beginning this uh, coding challenge. I haven't programmed this before, but I watched this video by Sebastian Legg uh, that explains the Minimax algorithm, also something called alpha beta pruning, which I'm not going to implement, but could be a good exercise next step for you. And I also found this article on uh, the geeksforgeeks.org website, um, which has a, a three-part series about the Minimax algorithm and how to apply it to tic-tac-toe. So those resources are probably your best bet for learning about the theory of the Minimax algorithm um, and how it can be applied to a wide variety of scenarios. But I'm going to look at the specifics of tic-tac-toe, which is a great starting example because it's a simple enough game that I could actually diagram out all of the possibilities, which even if that's computationally possible, is very hard to diagram. And there's lots of scenarios where you couldn't even compute all of the possible outcomes. And chess is an example of that. So Minimax is typically visualized as a tree. So the root of the tree is the, the current state of the game board. So I've drawn a configuration here of the tic-tac-toe board midway through the game because I don't want to start at the beginning where there's so many possibilities that I couldn't diagram. So right now it's X's turn and X has three possible moves. So I could express that in a tree diagram as move one, move two, and move three. So let's take a look at what I mean by that. I'm going to use a blue marker so you can see the new moves. So let's say one possible move is X going here. Let me diagram out the next two possible moves. Another possible move is X going here. And another possible move is X going here. So we need to look at each of these and determine, is the game over or is it continuing? So only in this case is the game over. And in this case, the game is over and X has won. So I'm going to mark this green for the state of X having won the game. Now it's O's turn. And for each of these spots, O could make as two possible options. O could go here. Or O could go here. O could go here. Or O could go here. And look at these. In this case and this case, O has won. Remember, we're trying to solve for the optimal move for X. X is making the first turn. So this means I can mark these where O wins as red. As like, those are bad outcomes. So while these are not terminal states, there's only one move possible for X. So I could draw an arrow and put that down here. But ultimately, I can just consider this as X has to go here. So these you could consider as terminal, and in which case X uh, will win. Now you see that I've visualized all the possible outcomes of the tic-tac-toe game based on this starting configuration. So how does X pick which path to go down? Where we can see here that the goal is for X to win the game, to get to here, here, or there. How does it do that? Um, and the way that it does that, and by the way, spoiler alert, this is the move it should pick. It should just win instantly. <laughs> but the idea of the Minimax algorithm is if we can score every possible outcome, those scores can ripple back up the tree and help 
x decide which way to go to find the highest possible score. The nice thing about tic-tac-toe is there's not a range of scores. Um, the, 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 the end points are either you won, you lost, or you tied. I, I could say if x wins, it's a score of plus one. If O wins, it's a score of negative one. And if it's a tie, it's a score of zero. So in other words, we could give this a score of plus one, this a score of plus one, this a score of negative one, this a score of negative one, and this a score of plus one. But we've got an issue. I'm trying to pick between this option, this option, and this option. These two don't have a score. How do I pick their score? Well, I can pick their score based on which one of these would be picked. But who's picking these? This is why the algorithm is called mini max. <laughs> because we have two players, each trying to make an optimal score. X is what's known as the maximizing player. So to go from here to here, it's X's turn, and X is maximizing. But here, it's now O's turn. O wants to win. X can assume that O is going to play their optimal move. Now, you could have a situation where your player doesn't play optimally, and that's something you might have to consider in terms of game theory. But in this case of the algorithm, we can assume that O is going to make the best possible move. I mean, if it makes a worse move, that's only better for us anyway. So it's all going to work out. So O is what's referred to as the minimizing player. The minimizing player. So O has the option of picking negative one or plus one. Negative one or plus one. Which one is O going to pick, pick as the minimizing player? The option to win. So we can then take the best outcome for O, the minimizing outcome for O, and pass that back up here as the score. And the same thing here. Now X is the maximizing player. Which one of these is it going to pick? Negative one, plus one, or negative one? These are negative one because even though it could win here, if X goes this way, O is going to win. If X goes this way, O is going to win if O plays optimally. So this is the way to go. This scenario that I picked might not be the best demonstration of the idea. Uh, in fact, there's no ties here. There's only two turns being played. So you, maybe what you might want to do is pause this video and uh, do the same exact diagram, but have X and O with two starting positions and see if you can diagram that whole thing out yourself. So how do we implement this in code? So that your first clue should be the fact that this is a tree diagram. Anytime you see a tree diagram, typically speaking, a recursive algorithm, a function that calls itself, is something that will apply. And this case is no different. I want to call minimax on this board position, um, try and then loop through all the possible moves and call minimax on each one of these board positions, loop through all the possible moves. If I ever get to an endpoint, return the score and have that score backtrack up or ripple back up the chain. So let's see if we can write the code to do this. So this here is the place where I want to write the new code. Currently, a move is chosen by picking a random available spot, and I no longer want to do that. So I'm, gonna, I'm actually going to change the name of this function to best move. And I don't need to worry about this, what's available. I just want to actually look at all the possible spots. So basically, I just want to know, is the spot available? If the spot is available, I want to try going there. So I'm going to say board i j is the AI player. And then I want to call minimax on the board. Why do I want to call minimax? Because I want to get what is the score. I want minimax with, to return to me the score for this particular move. Now, it's going to have to recursively check these two spots, but we'll, we'll get there. We're getting there. Ultimately, though, I need to figure out which one was the best. So I need to keep track by saying, like, the best score is uh, negative infinity. If score is greater than the best score, then that's the new best score. And the best move is this particular ij. And let me declare best move. So again, I haven't implemented minimax yet. I'm just getting the basic idea down. For, the ver for this turn, I need to start by looking at all the possible moves 
get the score for those by calling this mysterious minimax function that I'm about to write and find the best one, then apply that move. There's a big issue here though, because I am changing the global variable board. I am altering the game. I am moving X to that spot and then moving X to the next spot. So I could make a copy of the board, but I think an easy way to deal with this would actually just be to undo it. So right afterwards, I'm gonna just quickly undo that move. The next step would be to write the minimax function to really write the algorithm itself. I kind of want to know to see if there's any errors here. So actually what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a placeholder function in, minimax, which receives a board, and then I'm just going to return the score of one. So minimax is always going to return the score of one, meaning it's not going to be able to pick. It's just going to, they're all going to be a tie, so it's always going to pick the first one. But let's, uh, let's see how that goes. Uh, next turn is not defined because I called it uh, best move. And it's in one more place here in setup. Okay, well, it went there. Watch, it's gonna go to the next available spot, to the next available spot, to the next available spot. So you can see this is working. It's working in the sense that the algorithm is making a choice, but no matter what, it's always just gonna go in order of the board. Uh, and, oh, X1. <laughs> There's also a big issue here, which thankfully didn't, no, no major problems happened, but I named this function best move, and then I created a variable inside of the function with the same name, which, you know, you can always run into trouble. So let me actually just change this to move. Sort of by definition, it is the best move. Make sure this still works. All right, X is just picking straight down. Now the hard part. <laughs> I need to write the minimax function itself. So one thing that I've skip, skipped here, which is typical of a minimax algorithm, is I would also keep track of the depth because ultimately I could want to consider like how long is it taking me to get somewhere? Um, what is the depth of the tree that I'm on? So that's something that um, you'll, you'll see often within the algorithm implementation. So let me add that. So I add an argument uh, depth here and then give it a zero at first. Oh, you know what? I need another really important argument. This is a turn-based game, and the algorithm is going to behave differently whether it is the maximizing player's turn, X, or the minimizing player's turn, O in this case. And again, you could have more than two players, or there could be a lot of weird stuff going on, but that's ultimately uh, what I need here. So let me also add um, is maximizing, is maximizing. And the, this here would be true, right? So I want to perform minimax on this board with the starting depth of zero and the first move is the maximizing player. So let's say I'm maximizing. Uh, what do I want to do? Actually, what I want to do even before this is check to see if somebody won. So I'm pretty sure I already have a check winner function. That's something that I wrote in the previous coding challenge. Let me double check that. Check winner. The winner is null, and then by the end it returns a tie, it returns null, a tie, or the winner. So the score is, and let's, um, let's make a little lookup table that's basically uh, exactly what I wrote here. If x wins, it's a zero. If o wins, it's a negative one. If it's a tie, it's a zero. All right, so this is my lookup table for what the score then, and, and again, it's a very simple scenario. There's only three possible scores. If the result is not equal to null, the score is the associating, the, the number associated with this particular, oh, it got rid of those. I didn't need those uh, quotes. Ah, oh, Visual Studio Code just cleaned that up for me. Thank you very much. The score is uh, based on whoever won, and then I can return that. So this would be the terminal condition. If, if I am calling minimax on this particular board configuration at this particular depth, and it's an end state, if it's a terminal state, just return the score. That's what I'm supposed to do. If it's not a terminal state, if it's not this state and I can't just return the score, I need to check all the possible next moves. So I got this wrong actually. The next move, right, I'm actually, this is the AI player trying to, trying a spot, their move. So the next move is actually not the maximizing player. This should be false. But I'm gonna write this as if it is. So if it's the maximizing player, I can copy paste that from above, check all the spot, possible spots again. If it's available, try 
Uh, now that's the human, right? Then, oh no, this is the AI. I'm confused because currently the way I'm stepping through this, it's uh, in my mind, it's O's turn, but I'm writing the code for both, whether it's X's turn or O's turn. So for the sake of argument, it's X's turn right now. So I'm checking all of those spots, and then I'm going to say uh, return. No, oh, I need to check, I need to find, I need to find the best move. I'm kind of doing what I did again. Is there a way for me to reduce the amount of code I'm writing? I'm not gonna worry about this. I want to, once again, find the best score, which will be, in this case, negative infinity. And I want to say the score is the minimax algorithm of the board at depth plus one. And now the next player's turn is false, because I'm the maximizing player. And then I'm going to undo this, just like I did before. Why do I have to write this code twice? I'll think about later if I can refactor this to only do it once. If score is greater than best score, best score is equal to score. And then after all of this, for loop, for loop, if it's an empty spot, boom, boom, return the best score. So this is finding the best score for all the possible next turns by the AI player. Or if it's not the AI player, if it's the minimizing player, we can do exactly the same thing. And again, maybe there's a way, to, and I've, um, I'm missing a curly bracket? Yes, thank you, there's a curly bracket. So this is very important. There's a lot of ifs and for state for loops here. So maybe there's a, also a nice way to refactor this and make it more readable. But if it's the maximizing player, check all the spots, find the best possible outcome and return it, but call minimax recursively at the next future move. And then here, I'm gonna start, right? The minimizing player wants to find the best score for it, which is the lowest score. So, and that's the human player. And if the score is less than the best score, and then uh, return that best score. Woo. Oh, forget about this return one. I'm going to stare at this to make sure all my, my, my curly brackets line up. If, if, for, for, and then return the best score. Otherwise, if, if, for, for, and return the best score. I think this might actually be good. Should we just try it? Error on line 33, return, hold on. Return, oh, this should be, ah, look at this. So this is a huge mistake here. Return true, why did I have that there? I don't know why I did that. That's return score. This should be return score. The whole point of this, and I don't even need a separate variable here. I can just say return scores result, right? So this is any kind of recursive function needs a terminal condition, needs to exit, right? This function is always going to keep calling itself and calling itself minimax, minimax. Minimax, Minimax, I don't know what this extra code is in here, and Minimax, okay. Oh, yes. Simon is pointing out something to me which is great, which I don't need this if statement to find the best score. The whole point of this mini, and also there's a great chance for me to use the min function and the max function, because it's the Minimax algorithm. So I can actually say uh, score, is the lower one, the minimum between score and best score. It's gonna make it way easier to read. Thank you. And, oh no, but this one is max, is max. And then this one, oh, thank you for this. I don't know why I didn't think of this. I'm sure it's in every implementation. Score is the minimum between score and best score. So this makes it much more, much easier to read uh, here, okay. Let's try it, let's try it, why not? Caution to the wind. Okay, X went in the top left. That's definitely the optimal place to go. I'm gonna go here. No, no, bad X, bad X. You're not going in the right place. Yeah, I beat you. You're still going in order. Why are you still going in order? Oh, whoa, you're not going in order. You're making weird decisions. Oh, oh, oh! I see the error, I see the error of my ways. This has to be true, right? After the maximizing player's turn, it's the minimizing player's turn. After the minimizing player's turn, it's the maximizing player's turn. Okay, 
That's a good move, X. I see what you did there. Why can't you figure out to go there, X? Oh! Oh! Okay. This, I'm finding this, this is score is the new score. And the best score should be the bigger one, the maximum between score and best score, not score. Ah, this has to be this. Because I'm returning best score, and this has to be this. Okay, okay. Whew. Whew. Let's see. I really should not continue to play this drum sound. Come on, X, figure out where to go. Okay, I'm gonna go here. Oh, shoot, come on! Oh, no, 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 no! That's in the wrong place! It's in the wrong part! I knew, look, my brackets, bad brackets! I need to return the best score, hello, after I've checked all of the possibilities, meaning both for loops, the I and the J have completed. I got that right up here, but not down here. Oh, okay. I really think we've got it this time. Timpani sound. Ah! Yes. Ha <laughs> Tie! All right. All right, you, we're gonna go into competition now. I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you win by going here. Ah! So if I don't go in, if I, if I go in a corner, yeah, if I don't go to the middle, it's always gonna win. So X is always gonna win unless I go to the middle, um, in which case it's always gonna be a tie, unless I make a mistake, and then it's gonna win. Um, but if I go to any other spot, X is gonna be able to win, because it's always gonna, <laughs> Okay, this worked. Hey, that's the Minimax algorithm. <laughs> so one thing that might be interesting for me to try here really quickly before I sort of finish off this challenge would just be to comment out the AI going first. So I know this is technically incorrect because X is supposed to go first, but let's see what happens if I start with a fresh board and I go first. So I'm gonna go here, Aha, I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna go here, uh, I'm gonna go here, uh. Oh, it's high. Am I, oh, and it, um, something became undefined. Oh, if I go last, I guess there's no move for X and I've got an error. So that's the English Can I beat? Uh, no. <laughs> I lost! I don't believe there's any way for me to beat the AI player. It's a solved game because it's always going to go to the center. So I could try going here. I could go here. Go here. And I'm, uh, the best I could do is a tie. So you've watched this coding challenge. Maybe you have a creative idea about how to make your own version of this, but I just quickly whipped up, thanks to the chat in the live stream, also some suggestions of things you could try. So first of all, what happens if you just make two AI players that just play against each other over and over again? Well, in that case, it's just gonna be a tie every single time. It's a solved game, but that might lead to some interesting possibilities. Um, one thing that I'm not using is using the depth in the score. So for example, if I go back to the code, and I change these to say 10 and negative 10, I could account for the depth, meaning I could have a higher score if I win more quickly than if it takes longer to win. Right now I'm not accounting for that. So where in the code would you subtract out depth? That's something you could try. Certainly it would be interesting to make a larger board. So can you play trick tic-tac-toe on a five by five or a seven by seven? Um, you, the winning conditions would change. Uh, the optimal play would change. That would be exciting to try. I hope somebody does that. Um, you could try more players. Like how would you have a tic-tac-toe game with three players? That's something you could try with a larger board. Um, you could try another game. Maybe Connect Four would work. Um, that might be able to apply Minimax to. Um, just thinking about the interface, animation, like right now, whenever, whenever I go, the, the next turn happens immediately. You could, have, you could think about timing and that sort of thing. Um, but then, I always say, high degree of difficulty, and maybe worth me coming back to in a future video at some point, would be these two last items. One is known as alpha beta pruning. Alpha beta pruning refers to the, uh, an aspect of the Minimax algorithm where you find an optimal path and you know that all the other possibilities are going to be worse and you don't need to go forth and check every possibility. So you could research how that works and add it to this algorithm. It's explained in the Sebastian Lag video. Then there's a possibility of a game where the number of moves is so vast you couldn't possibly compute the entire tree. 
Chess is the classic example of that. So you need some heuristic or a way of an estimated guess of what the score could be with any given state. So one way of doing this, which I'm not saying is a good, good strategy, but a simple thing you could do with chess is you could add up the total number of、uh, white pieces versus black pieces. Then you could say like, well, the score is higher if you have if the maximizing player has more pieces than the opponent.、Um, so that's one way of, of approaching it. So you don't actually stop at the end of the tree, but you just go. Some predetermined depth, and then calculate an estimate, and have that ripple back up the tree. So you maybe give that a try with a more complex game.、Um, certainly, other types of AI algorithms and neural networks could play a role at some point with how you make that estimate.、Um, but ultimately, that that is something that、uh, would be interesting to try as well.、Um, one more idea that just came from the chat. So this is quite similar to the idea of a larger board, but instead of just a larger two-dimensional board, you could create a three-dimensional board. So tic-tac-toe that happens in a cube. I should just do that as a coding challenge separately、uh, myself. So、uh, hopefully you learned something, and maybe this algorithm that looked a little terrifying to you at one point now seems quite accessible and doable.、Um, maybe your creative idea is not on this list. Please. Uh, make your own version of this. Share it with me at thecodingtrain.com. There will be a link in this video's description with instructions for how to share it. If you don't know how to share it, just write a comment, file an issue. We, the Coding Train community, are here to help you. And I can't wait to see you in a future video. Goodbye.